everyone, my name is Miss Danielle and I work at a very special place called the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. The Dixon Gallery is an art museum. What do you think you'd find in an art museum? You probably guessed it, we have art. We have paintings, drawings, sculptures and statues, all kinds of really cool things for you to see. And at the Dixon, not only do we have art, but when you walk outside of the building, we also have a very beautiful garden space filled with all different types of plants and flowers. Today, I want to talk to you about some of the paintings that are in our permanent collection at the Dixon. The paintings we'll be looking at today are all landscape artwork. Landscapes are paintings that show land. So let's take a look at them and see what we can learn. The first painting we'll be looking at today is titled The Road to Newburyport. It was painted in 1856 using oil paints. The artist who made it was named Alfred Thompson Breicher. Now, as I said earlier, all of the paintings we'll be looking at today are landscapes. But just because all of the paintings are landscapes does not mean they will look exactly the same. For an example, I found another painting by an artist named George L. Noyes, and this painting is also of Newburyport, just like Alfred's. What things do we notice are the same? And what things do we notice are different? Take a moment to look at the paintings and think about it for yourself before we go over some similarities and differences together. The main similarity is what is painted. Both paintings are a landscape with houses in the background. We see trees and grass and a blue sky. The differences I notice are in the way they're painted. In the painting from the Dixon's collection, we can see realistic details like the individual leaves on the trees and extra details like the little birds on the rooftops. If we look at our other painting of Newburyport made by George, we'll notice that the artist used broad brush strokes and we can see a texture across the painting of those different colors starting to mix together. I personally really enjoy both of these paintings. They have very different styles, but that's what makes them unique and special. Let's look at another landscape painting from the Dixon's permanent collection. This painting is called Avalanche Lake. It was painted in 1946 by an artist named Maurice Friedman. Maurice was an American artist and his artwork is known for having really heavy lines and bold blocks of color. Speaking of line, let's talk about the different types of line in art and see what we can find in the painting. First, there are straight lines. Do you see any straight lines in this painting? I see lots of them in the mountain ridge. Lines have different names depending on the direction they're drawn. Horizontal lines are lines that go across the paper. One horizontal line is this tiny one at the back of the lake. Another type of line is a vertical line. Vertical lines are ones that go straight up and down. I see a few small ones up here at the front. Next is a diagonal line. Diagonal lines are ones that are drawn at an angle. I see some of these on the edge of the mountain. Next, let's talk about zigzag lines. Zigzag lines are ones that are kind of jagged back and forth. They almost look like the letter V over and over again. I see tiny zigzags all throughout the trees. Next, we have wavy lines. They go back and forth just like a zigzag, except for it's with a curve instead of a point. We don't really have a wavy line in this painting, but in the sky, you can see a line that's kind of a mix between a wavy line and a zigzag. And we have two more lines I wanna talk about, but they are not in this painting either. We have a curly line, which looks kind of like a loop-de-loop, and we have a dotted line, which is a line that's separated into small pieces. Now that we've discussed the different types of line, let's see if we can make a landscape using all of them. For our landscape drawings today, you just need a few things. Some paper, something to draw with, and something to color with. I have markers and crayons and a pencil, but you can use anything that you want for your drawing and your coloring. So, before we get started and I show you my drawing, remember these are the rules. 
You have to have every type of line we talked about in your finished drawing today. It does not matter how you use them. We just wanna make sure every type of line is somewhere in your drawing. So I'm going to show you how I draw my example, but is yours going to look exactly like mine? No, I wanna see what yours looks like. What can your imagination come up with and how can you use your lines? Let's see how it goes. All right, we've got a horizontal line to start and zigzag lines, a curvy line for a river, hmm, how about some vertical lines and diagonal lines to create a tree? Some more wavy lines on the mountains. A dotted line to show my leaf blowing in the wind. And some curly lines in that river. A few more diagonal and vertical trees. And a few zigzag lines to add texture on the grass. All that's left to do is color. And remember, when you make your landscape using lines, yours does not have to look anything like mine. You may draw it completely differently and color it completely differently. And that's great. Art is always more interesting when everyone looks different. I hope that you had just as much fun making your landscape as I had making mine. Thank you so much for learning and creating with me today. I hope to see you again soon. Bye! If you're proud of what you made today, you can share it with us using the hashtag Dixon at Home or Discover the Dixon. We would love to see what you created.